This is episode 148 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we answer the question, is not focusing on food a possible solution to resolving food issue? And we are doing that with a case study. So if you did episode 147 quizzes and you got a mid to high score, stay tuned. This is for you. My name is Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist. I reversed my diagnosis of anxiety, depression, adrenal fatigue, and obesity by going beyond the food. I can tell you one thing, that willpower, discipline, and deprivation aren't the permanent solution to transforming your relationship to food. So how do you leave overeating, emotional eating, food craving, and binging behind you so you have the food freedom to achieve all of your goal and be happy now? As a top 25 alternative health podcast in the world, this is the Beyond the Food Show. I have created an audio training entitled How to Change Any eating habit, specifically the one that is sabotaging you, three strategy to create the consistency and confidence you need to change your eating habit without willpower or discipline. I did this in order to help women like yourself engage with food in a completely different perspective so that they stop craving, overeating, binging, and using food to feel better. You can put an end to the cycle of frustration, the all or nothing mindset and shame towards your own body and become a motivated, consistent, focused and self-loving version of yourself. This free audio training is about the why we eat, how we eat, so that the what we eat can be easy, effortless and pleasurable. So if you are ready to step into the new version of yourself so that you can change how you interact with food, head over to stephaniedodzie.com slash training right now. Hello, ladies. This is Stephanie Dozier. I am back from California. So if you follow me on Instagram, you saw my journey through the desert of California, which is such a special place for me, particularly Joshua Tree. If you've never been to Joshua Tree, ladies, go Google that place right now and put that on your bucket list. It's a very special place, very grounding. It is absolutely beautiful. So if you want to see some picture, go through my Instagram account. I also attended at the back end of this dessert road trip, a conference. It's called Mindshare. And that conference, it's for the top world health expert that work online. And what a wow. You're going to see a lot of people coming through either the online summit coming up shortly or the podcast, absolutely mind blowing people that I met there that I want to bring forward to you. So I'm looking forward to do that. And also I did a very trendy story from my (laughs) journey at the pool party with the health expert. I saved it and I added it to my Facebook feed. So maybe you're not following me on Instagram, but you're a Facebook person, go check out my professional page, Stephanie Dodier Nutrition, and go check out the story of my journey with body image and the pool party with the health expert. Everybody has their challenge. I'm not perfect. So I share that with you. So go check that out. But also I wanted to mention, oh my God, I've been receiving more than ever feedback and review for the podcast from you, the listener. And I wanted to share just a few that have come in in the last two weeks. And it's mind blowing the transformation that this podcast is bringing to you. And thank you for letting me know. Thank you for sharing your feedback. Here's just a few. 
So Julie said, we need more people like you. And this means like real people talking real problems, showing the struggle without filter is highly needed now more than ever. Thank you, Julie. That's your real name for letting me know that because sometimes I struggle with sharing my personal life in the, my not perfect situation. So you're helping me with that. And Jen sent a review that said, I suffer from anxiety in other aspects of my life, but didn't realize I was suffering from food anxiety until I listened to the podcast. Knowledge is power. Listening and signing up for the beyond the food has been awakening. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, for letting me know. And yeah, nobody talks about that. The stuff we talk about here, I'm telling you girls, no one is talking about this because it's very uncomfortable. So keep giving me review. Go to stephaniedoze.com slash review. You're paying me, quote unquote, back for doing the podcast, but also you're helping the podcast rank higher so more people are exposed to this information. And again, no one talks about this stuff. So let's make this a grassroots movement. Share your review. Now, before we get into today's podcast, I did make some change. I was intending to talk about the effect of body image on our appetite. I'm still going to do that. Don't worry. We're still going to talk about that. But I decided to move it to a little bit later in about a couple of weeks. And today I have decided to share an interview I literally just finished recording 10 minutes ago. And this interview is a case study. So let me give you a little bit of background. The case study is a process of recording the result of a particular person, group, or situation over a period of time. The case study is something that is done in business. That's something that is done in science to actually look back at a change that we've implied into a situation and see the result of that change. So the case study today is about the possibility of not talking about food in an attempt to resolve food issue. Because I know it's very counterintuitive to all of us to attempt to resolve an issue without talking about the issue. But the truth is, food issue are not a normal issue. They're not like a car problem or a mechanical issue. It's psychological. It's totally different. So the approach of going beyond the food is about not talking about food in an attempt to fix the food issue. And I talk about that. That's the whole context of this podcast. But I thought the best way for me to convey that to you is by me sharing the story of someone inside the Going to Beyond the Food program. So you can hear it from the perspective of a student and how it did affect her, her name is Carol, her relationship to food. So this episode is a reaction to the result of the quiz in episode 147. So the prior episode that released last week, if you haven't yet listened to it, I would suggest that you pause this episode 148 right now Go listen to 147, do the quiz, because that was the whole context of 147, which was the quiz, the self-assessment in relationship to how you relate to food and what should be your next step. So go listen to that, do the quiz, and then come back here and see how what I'm suggesting to be your next step, if that is relatable to you through this case study. So that's what the purpose of this episode is, is to challenge the solution that I gave you on 147, which was to go beyond the food. And how does that really work? What does that look like? How does that feel like from a student perspective? And what are the results? Like, what is the outcome, the benefit of the going to beyond the food? And not from my mouth but from the mouth of a student that has even yet graduated. We're at week 10 right now of the summer, spring semester. So 
what has been her experience and the results. So kind of the before, during, and after, if you want. So that's the interview. So we're going to go right into the interview right now. We're going to roll it. And then I'll come back at the end of the interview to kind of sum it up for you. So hope you enjoy. Welcome to the show, Carol. How are you? I'm great. I'm happy to be talking to you. I'm thankful that you wanted to share your experience. So as I mentioned quickly in the intro, Carol is the recipient of the spring, summer, going beyond the food scholarship program. And I wanted to bring her to you guys on the podcast so you can see from her perspective, her experience in the going beyond the food academy. But first, I would like you, Carol, to paint us a picture of who you were before you even discover my work, how you discovered my work, and how you came to apply for the Going to Beyond the Food Academy Scholarship Program. Sure. So I am in my late 40s. I am a widow. I am a single parent. My daughter is a teenager. And I have had food and body issues um, since I was 11 years old. So for most of my life and things got much worse when my husband died. And I, I'm a big seeker. So I love to learn and I've been struggling with this for a long time, but I never give up because I do believe that, that I can be free of it all. And I'm, I stumbled upon your work. I think you were being interviewed by someone else. I can't remember who, forgive me, but I then started looking at your website and your blog and listening to your podcast voraciously. And I just really connected with everything that you were saying and the guests that you shared. And I just love the way you combine spirituality and wellness and science. And you have this very no nonsense approach. And then you were talking all about, you had a webinar about your going beyond the food program and you were offering a scholarship and I applied. I thought, oh my God, this is amazing. And what have I got to lose? And so I applied and you picked me, which is so amazing. And I'm thankful that, so we had well over a hundred applicants for the spring summer and your story really touched me. And I think I've said this to you personally, but I'm going to say it to everyone One of the reasons why Carol was picked was because in her application, she clearly outlined that this would not only change her life, but her daughter. And your intention was to learn those skill sets so you can teach your daughter. And to me, that was a big two for one. Mm, Totally. (laughs) And your desire and your awareness of your daughter copying what you were doing. And if you didn't get help, she would have the same issue as you were. So that was a big trigger point for me. So, and, Mm. and you were a great student. So you started the program. Um, So paint us a picture of what was your relationship to food before? Yeah. I would say that it's been somewhat tortured. Mm. So I kind of have this idea that it's my only source of pleasure and yet it's also the source of so much pain this was let's say past Mm -hmm. tense just that you know it's the only pleasure that I could ever get was from food and yet it was also the source of so much pain and that it was a way that I would punish myself so either through binging or restricting or some combination of both and yeah so very complicated and long-standing What was the consequence of that relationship to food it had on your life? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it has stolen years of my life that Mm -hmm. I could at this point have a PhD in I don't even know what, or have cured cancer or maybe created world peace with the amount of time that I spent obsessing about calories and macros and my weight and or recovering from binges not to mention missing work or not being present or canceling trips or, I mean, really just like totally stealing my life. So literally it was affecting your social relationship through trips. Like you would cancel trip because of relationship to food. 
cancel trips, not go to family events, not go to work sometimes because I was so sick from having binged. I mean, really, really deep. Hmm. So we talked about your daughter a little bit earlier. Um, How is your relationship to your body and to food, how did that as in the past affected your daughter? So it's very interesting because my daughter, she does not have my personality. She's very different. She's very confident. She's very extroverted. She's got a ton of body positivity. Thank goodness. And I have also been extremely honest with her about my struggles, including talking to her when she went into puberty and she was 11, you know, talking to her about how I went on my first diet when I was 11 years old because my body was changing and I was told that I was too fat and how I would never let that happen to her. And I feel like she listened to me and also because of her personality, she's just not there, but it very much upsets her when I am engaging in harmful behaviors. So Mm. when she was younger and I was actively binging, she would do things like duct tape the freezer and put signs on the freezer and say, no nuts for you because that was the food that I would binge on. I mean, so even though she's not engaging in these behaviors, she was deeply affected by my behaving that way. She was feeling pain. Feeling pain for me, feeling protective of me, almost parenting me on some levels, which is completely inappropriate and not, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and that stuff really. And then, you know, just if I was grumpy or grouchy, because of how sick I felt or because of how mad I was at myself, obviously she was affected by that as well. Absolutely. And then also missing me because, you know, I was not wanting to spend time doing fun things because of this. Or because you didn't think you were acceptable, so you wouldn't go out. Totally. totally. Right? We don't realize how little subtle choices or things we do in our life, how it affects kids right. um, because they're very sensitive little being, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. How old is your daughter? She just turned 14. 14. Okay. So let's bring us into the work. So you received this scholarship and then you came into the Going to Beyond the Food Academy. What were your expectations before we started? Well, I knew that you were going to push me. (laughs) (laughs) I expected to be pushed out of my comfort zone. I expected to be challenged. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that I expected tough love. I expected you to present a lot of, as you do in your podcast. I mean, I think people who are a fan of your podcast know, like you, you keep it really real you present a lot of very important information in a new way, and then you expect people to apply it. Mm -hmm. So I had those expectations going in. And so... And it wasn't going to be a passive process, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. you had to get involved. Yes. So let's describe to people how it was. So you came in, the program is a 12-week program, and currently we're interviewing Carol, and we're... We just finished the tenth lesson, so we have two more lessons. But you're like more than three quarter of the way through. Yep. How has been your experience? Yeah, I mean, it's been extraordinary, extraordinary. I mean, beyond, beyond, <laughs> beyond the food, beyond everything, beyond what I could have imagined. You know, it's been extraordinary because it's really not about food at all. It's about how to live. I mean, honestly, mm-hmm. I have so much work still to do. I, I mean, maybe that's just life, but the topics that you've addressed are so important to living a meaningful and fulfilling life. Just even the fact that you started from the get go, starting with this idea of having an abundant mindset and a growth mindset, you know, like, that's crucial for life in all areas. And I'm a teacher and I teach that to my students, but I don't think I've ever been in a program about food, supposedly about (laughs) food, where that's where we started. 
And I knew right away, like, whoa, I'm in for real change here because this is a completely different way of approaching things. And we haven't talked about food, hasn't been the centered yet, has the first 10 and a half week and not talking about food, has it changed anything in your relationship to food? It has, absolutely. And that's not to say, like, it's still... I'm far from perfect uh, mm-hmm. in terms of <laughs> in terms of my relationship with food and my eating. However, everything has softened in terms of the drama and negativity around it. I don't beat myself up anymore when I turn to food emotionally, even though that's not necessarily what I want to be doing in my life. I get curious instead of critical. And one of the big pieces is that you talk a lot about the need for connection and support and you're so accessible. It's not just about like the fact that we have a class every week, but we have a class and a Q and A and a community where we can post and ask questions. And so I feel very, very supported. And even when I can't be live, I can reach out and ask for support and I'm getting that support. And so it's kind of shifting everything. Hmm. So it takes all the shame and the hiding and the secrecy and the isolation out of it. And I think for many of us and the listener right now, that's where we are. We are in that shame, secrecy, do it behind closed door. And the thought of sharing that is scary. Totally. Totally. But it's the way through, I guess. Right. Right. So the exposure to the community and to me, though maybe uncomfortable, has had a lot of positive effect on you. Oh, yeah. Tremendous. Tremendous. Because in the past, if I engaged in behavior that I didn't want to engage in, if I did something that I thought was unskillful, like binging or eating emotionally or overeating, I would beat myself up. I would kind of replay it over and over again. How could I do that? What's wrong with me? You know, and, and hide. And I'd feel like, well, I can't tell anyone what happened or I have to start all over, start at zero. And with this, preemptively sometimes, if I know I'm going into challenging situations, I'll reach out and say I need some support or after the fact. And it not only normalizes everything, but it also... It just kind of takes the sting away because it, I don't know, there's something about like even just articulating what's going on in my brain, getting it out, Mm -hmm. puts me in a different place emotionally. So I, I want to expand on something because I know it's a trigger point for many women. Mm -hmm. It's the whole normalizing. So for many women that are wanting to change, the approach that they have taken, the approach that they believed was effective, or they still believe is effective, is through not normalizing and shaming and punishing and saying it's not acceptable. So by more shaming, by more punishment, they believe that that behavior will change. What you said is the contrary to that. You say, by normalizing, it changed the behavior. Yes. Can you explain the contrast from what you did in the past versus what you're doing now and the effect and how it felt different and resulted in difference through normalization? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think it's this idea of in the past, it would always be like, when I'm perfect, and I'm saying perfect in air quotes, but <laughs> when I'm perfect, then I'm allowed to communicate with people and present myself to others and, and get out there. As opposed to through this entire process, I have been extremely imperfect. <laughs> yeah. And yet I have been traveling. I have been going to conferences. I have been engaging in things with my daughter constantly. I, I've just been living a very, a much fuller life even with all the messy imperfections and around food and around my body. And while doing that, I have been kind to myself. So through the mistakes and the slips and all of those things, I've been doing it with this 
compassionate perspective, thanks to your support and guidance and modeling every step of the way, I, I want to add. And that's completely different. I always thought like, I can live a full life when I'm perfect. And I, I know how ridiculous that sounds because nobody's ever perfect and there's nothing in my life I do perfectly. But I've always had that belief in the back of my head when it comes to food and body. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, really, like since I was 11, mm -hmm. that you know, I'm only good if I'm eating perfectly and I weigh a certain amount. That's the only time I am good and acceptable. And it doesn't matter how well I do in my life, in my career, in anything, because I'm not eating well and I'm not the right size. And through this process, all of that has been kind of dispelled and I'm still not eating perfectly and I may not be the size that I quote unquote should be, <laughs> but it's becoming less and less and less important and harder and harder to, to maintain that myth hmm. because it's been called out as ridiculous through again, your modeling and your support and your very persistent questioning if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, it does. And what I heard through what you just said is you lived a fuller life, which brought you, I assume, more pleasure in your life. Yes. And made you feel better and allowed you to seek less in food. Could that be a right way of saying it? Yes. Well, and also seeing, I think, also the futility of trying to find pleasure in food. Oh, interesting. Which is not to say, like, don't get me wrong, when I'm hungry and it's a good meal, it's yeah. definitely pleasurable. But I'm talking about that endless seeking for a fix that food cannot give me because that's not what I'm needing. Yeah. You're seeking pleasure beyond food. You're seeking pleasure in more social connection or more stimulation in your field of passion. Right. And I think you had a couple of good experiences. I remember you posting about like family trips and yeah. you have a passion that you are pursuing like a hobby and you were able to go at conferences about that topic where yeah. in the past it would have not has been that. Am I correct? Totally. Well, and, and the difference is like the trip to my family, you know, we, we had talked about moving from lack to abundance right before I went yep. on that trip. And so I predetermined in my mind that I was only going to look for the good while I was there. And I had the best trip with my family that I have had in years where I really did completely change the dynamics of a very complicated relationship just through my mindset. So that was unbelievable. And then I was able to go to a conference about something I'm passionate about and be completely present and engaged for the whole time. And also I was able to cut that trip short with no guilt and no shame, just recognizing my needs instead of trying to push through and put myself in jeopardy. And so be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was exactly. And that was huge also. So it's really interesting because the whole going beyond the food, it's also seeking pleasure beyond the food. And that's what's coming very clear in that story of yours is that you started to cultivate totally. pleasure and good experience beyond food. Yes. Yes. So let's have a real and honest discussion. Was there any challenges and difficulty through the last 10 weeks? Because it is a fear on some people, right? I just don't want to go there, Stephanie. Like, this is scary. And I don't know what's going to happen to me. So has there been difficult time? And, and if so, what have you done or learned from that? Hmm. I actually, I've been so, <laughs> I've been so inspired and motivated and like hyper stimulated in a positive way by everything that we've been studying. I mean, I just feel like every week I'm like, oh my God, this is so interesting. I want to know so much more about this. And oh my God, this is so important. I want to do more. And then you add another layer and I just keep thinking, God, I've got to go back to the first week and like re-listen to everything because I'm missing stuff. So the only thing that I can say is just that it's a lot of material. And so for me, I'm just so happy that we have lifetime access to it because it's the kind of stuff where each week of, and I mean, I've only been through 10, right? But mm -hmm. I'm assuming even going through till 12, each week is kind of 
a huge thing in and of itself that we could practice for a very long time before it becomes a routine. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like every single week is so meaningful and important. I mean, there are just so many pieces. I don't know if I need to delineate them all, but I guess my point is just that every week I'm just sort of scratching the surface on the topic and then we move on to something else and I'm like, oh my God, that's so important too. So it's all like, it's super positive, just more that like, it's really great that you give us access because for me personally, there's a lot for me to, to listen to again. And I'm looking forward to doing that. And you're right. It is why we have lifetime access because not that it is a lot in the sense that it's impossible. The skills you learn are, I want to say human being skills. Totally. Totally. Like they're just meaningful and fulfilling life. Exactly. It's the, how to be a, a human that can be engaged and have fun beyond what we look like or what we eat. And that results into eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full. Yes. And this is the whole concept of diet, right? We're seeking to be happy in restriction of food and looking a certain way when truly happiness is over there, but we can looking over there. Right. Uh, so the course is about pointing you over there where the truth is. And yes, lifetime access is important because this is not skills you learn, like learning how to write. It's something that you need to practice. So definitely. And when you go through the next round, there's new things that are going to come up to your mind, right? The new perspective on each lesson, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what the past students say. They're like, oh, I, I didn't get that. Now I get that. Yes. Yes, exactly. Right? So, so if a woman is listening to you right now and she's where you are, and so here's the biggest objection of many women, and I know many women will shake their hands right now and say, I've invested in so much before and it didn't work. Why will this be any different? What would you say to them? I would say that, okay, I want to say this correctly. If you think that you're going to come into this and lose 20 pounds and eat perfectly for the rest of your life, then it's the wrong thing. But if you think you're going to come into this and have a life-changing experience where you're learning skills that you can apply in every area of your life, that you can apply in all of your relationships, at work, with your body, with your family, then it's worth every penny and more. I mean, it's time invested that's going to impact you personally and everyone you know. I think that's well said. Because I think it's so not what you've done before. Right. That's why it will work. Right. Because yeah. it's the work we haven't done before. It, exactly. Exactly. So let's do something funny. <laughs> what are, if I was to say, what is your top five things you've learned? Okay, let's see. Top five. Number one is that what I do with food is probably the least important thing about me. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Number two, that I have a lot of control over the outcomes in my life, way more control over the outcomes of my life than I ever really thought I did. Mm -hmm. Number three, and this is something I learned today, <laughs> which really blew my mind, is that we can become addicted to negative emotional patterns. And I never thought of it that way. And they repeat throughout our lifetime and that we can change those. Number four is that body acceptance and treating our bodies well has nothing to do with the size of our bodies and everything to do with how we engage in life. Hmm. And number five, number five is that change is a really active process and that you can't just like absorb information and think you're miraculously going to change. You actually have to really do the work. That's very profound. See, I was thinking maybe you were going to come out with like title of the lessons, but it's actually 
what you shared with us is what you process out of each lesson. Mm-hmm. And that's even better. That means you've really engaged and found these truths into your life. Yeah. Anything else you would like to share with people listening right now that are where you were? Oh, I just, I guess, number one, just that, again, like I went into this knowing I was going to learn a ton and really be challenged. And I was overwhelmingly grateful and blown away that you had selected me for the scholarship, but it has surpassed my wildest dreams. Like it's just been such an incredible experience. You are so knowledgeable and compassionate and yet tough in a good way. Mm -hmm. And it's been just such an incredible experience. Like I feel so grateful to be a part of this process and to have connected with you because I'm learning so much. It's so aligned with who I am and what I do and what I believe in. And I can't speak more highly of it. I really can't. Thank you. So if you're listening to this and you are in a state of fear, because the main reason why I wanted to share Carol's experience was to help those that are listening to this, that are hesitant, that are afraid. This is a self-sabotaging behavior. And Carol, you know that, right? We've talked about self-sabotage enough. That sensation of fear you have right now or hesitation is a way for your subconscious mind to sabotage you for you not to evolve and grow and transform. Mm -hmm. Because your subconscious mind sees the potential of change and it freaks right out to think that you could be someone else that you're not today. Mm -hmm. So the reason for me sharing Carol's story is to help you and move you beyond that state of fear, because there's really, I don't think as the teacher and the creator, I don't think there's anything to lose in this program. Yeah. Contrary to dieting or other programs. Yeah. There is things to lose because it could affect your health. This is all mind stuff and it, there's nothing to lose. Yeah. Other than you moving beyond fear. Right. So any other parting words, Carol? No, I mean, I just fully agree with what you're saying. There is nothing to lose. In fact, to the contrary, so much to gain, so much to gain. And again, not just in the 12 weeks of the immediate class, but like this is stuff that I'm going to be going back to again and again and again because it's so important for life on every level. And for you as a mother, it's going to be a tool for you to teach your daughter as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. There is exercise in there. Like I just think of body acceptance, right. That we can do together as mom and daughter to help our daughters through their own journey of body acceptance. Completely. I would pretty much say every single lesson, there have been parts of it that I've shared with my daughter already And again, as I recycle through these lessons and become more comfortable in the work myself, it's just becoming part of what we talk about. It is the stuff that I wished that I was taught when I was 10 or 11 years old, but the level of consciousness of my family, or even at the time back in those days, wasn't something that were being discussed. Exactly. Uh, Me too. Me too. So I ended up at 36, not knowing any of this stuff and being where I was and had to learn. And that's what I teach it now. But for all the moms out there, if you can learn it, experience it, and then give it to your daughters or your nieces as a gift. That's right. So see it from that perspective. And I know there's many moms in our community. That's the motivating factor first coming in. It's funny because they're doing it for their daughters, And then at the end, they realize they're really doing it for themselves, but Mm -hmm. it will will be for their daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Carol, for your time today. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciated the discussion and we will see you in the next lesson, I guess. Okay. Sounds good. So this was Carol's story. Could it be your story? That's the question. Could this be your case study? That's the question. My answer to you is yes, if 
Yes, if you were a mid to high score in the episode 147 quiz. The quiz was about, is it time for you to try a non-food approach, a non-diet approach? So if you did the quiz in 147 and your score was mid to high, this could be your story too. Yes, it could be your story if you are willing to invest in yourself. Now, for many people, when I say investing, people go to money. It's true. It's going to require you to invest money. So you got to be willing to do that, even if you failed before. Yes, it could be you if you are willing to invest physically, emotionally, and time into yourself. So let's go beyond money here and let's think about investing time, emotion, space into your own self. So yes, this could be you if you're willing to do that. Yes, it could be you if you have suffered enough. This is the type of program that is not to be taken lightly. So if you haven't yet suffered enough, then the amount of required effort to do this program will be too much for you because the pain hasn't been big enough. But if the pain and the suffering you've had enough, then this could be a solution for you. If you are a diet addict, if you are a binge eater, an overeater, a craving, obsessed person, or you suffer from severe body image, yes, this could be your story too. It's not specific to one behavior because we don't talk about the behavior, you see? We talk about beyond that behavior, right? So if you're been labeled or have labeled yourself with any of those quote unquote condition, yes, that could be you. So what is the next step? Number one, you got to go put your name on the wait list. So the links are in the show notes, stephaniedozy.com slash 148, or you can go directly to the website, stephaniedozy.com slash academy and put your name on the wait list because we're going to treat our wait lists student, more particularly with earlier enrollment, with special bonus. So go put yourself in the wait list because I don't know how it's going to turn out when the door open. Am I going to run out of space right away? But if you want to be sure, go on the wait list too. If you have real, real financial difficulty, and I'm very strict about that, the Going Beyond the Food Scholarship Program is not for you because you are afraid of investing into yourself. No, the scholarship program is for women who have suffered severe financial distress and cannot truly afford this program, then go put yourself on the scholarship. We close the scholarship in three days. So August the 19th, Monday is the day where we cut off the registration of the application for going beyond the food scholarship program. So go run there. And if that's not your case, you're a doubter, right? You like, I don't know. I've never done this online thing. I don't know if I can do this. You just want to dip your toes. You can also purchase the claim your food freedom program, which is kind of my self study high school kind of course, the entry level, it's $97. And the good thing is if you did purchase Claim Your Food Freedom, you know, like, oh my God, this is what I need. I need more of this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to credit you the $97 from Claim Your Food Freedom program towards your tuition fee for going beyond the food academy. So you're kind of not wasting any money, but you're dipping your toes in, in this online learning, going beyond the food method. So I'd suggest you do that. If you are that person, go get the $97 program, dip your toe. If that's your thing, then we'll credit you the money. So we have nothing to lose. So these are my next three steps. If you recognize yourself and you want what Carol's got. That's what I would suggest. Now, the next episode of the podcast going beyond the food, we're going to talk about a request 
from one of the listener, which is about people pleasing. So it's a question from a listener about when is it time for you to stop wanting to please other, but instead pleasing yourself? How can you do that? So that's going to be the next episode, 149 of the podcast. I hope to see you there. Remember to share this episode if you know someone else in your life that could have impact into listening to this. I would really appreciate. This is a grassroots movement. So anything you can do to share would be really appreciated. I love you. And I look forward to hang out with you on the next episode. I really am starting to see myself as perfect, just just the way that I am. It's the first time in my life that I realized that my self-sabotage was really fear of failure. For me, that's huge because I would have normally sat there and ate the whole bag. And I ate like two or three bites of it and threw it out. Because normally I would just sit there and shovel in the cake and go, oh, that was good. What's next? Sometimes I'll go into the kitchen. I'm going to eat a banana and I stop and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not even hungry. Then I'll walk away from it and go on and it's over and done with. Do you eat for other reason than hunger. Maybe eating because you are stressed, frustrated, bored, or because you think you deserve it. I struggled with craving, overeating, and even binging on healthy food, no matter what diet I was on. Keto, paleo, organic, whole food, nothing stopped it. And maybe you feel the same. Tired of dieting, over-exercising, and yet another fad program. Or maybe you're overeating and binging and wish you could just be a normal eater. I thought I was alone. I was sick and tired of being a victim of my food urges. Who wouldn't be? Do you feel stuck with your eating and body right now? I want you to know one thing. You are not alone. You aren't broken. If food hasn't been going the way you've planned, know this. It is not your fault. Sadly, most women keep repeating the cycle of yo-yo dieting because they rely on old strategy like restriction, discipline, and the worst one of all, willpower. Perhaps you believe in eating more intuitively and would love to trust yourself around food, but are afraid of trying because honestly, you just don't trust yourself or worse, you've tried before and you fail. So that's why I want to peel back the curtain and show you exactly how I changed my relationship to food and the one of my client going from overeating, binging and emotional eating to food freedom. And quite frankly, it is completely different from anything you've heard before. Claim Your Food Freedom is a 21-day journey to dissolve the hidden blocks, the emotional blocks that keep you stuck and finally stop sabotaging yourself with food. Claim Your Food Freedom is a four-step mapping process that will take you from where you are now to food freedom. You see, everything will change the moment you are willing to see beyond the food and understand why you eat. It's about transforming why and how you eat so what you eat becomes easy, natural, and peaceful. Health, well-being, self-confidence, satisfaction, and success are all byproduct of you looking beyond the food to unlock your food freedom. Plus, I'll coach you on specific roadblock that may get in the way from you being free from food. Probably the things that made you fail before. The constant hate on your body, the all or nothing attitude, aka perfectionism, fear of failure or even shame. And lastly, time management. If you are ready to step into a new version of yourself that eat normally and is at peace with food and maybe even your body, head over to www.claimyourfoodfreedom.com and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs>